For the first time since joining the program, the Louisville Cardinals are headed to the ACC Championship game. On today's episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast, we're going to talk about Jeff Brom's squad clinching a spot in Charlotte with a win over Miami. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. As always, I want to personally thank or take this time to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the Locked On Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team, every day. As I mentioned in the opener, the cards are going to Charlotte. They punched their ticket on Saturday to the ACC championship game with a 38-31 to victory over the Miami Hurricanes on the road. We'll talk about the team's resiliency. We'll talk about some of the key plays or some of the clutch plays that were key, especially down the stretch. And more. So there's a lot to unpack that we will do in this episode and the next. Uh, before we do that, um, I know that I mentioned at the end of last week that the Miami recap was going to be delayed. I actually made the trip down to the 305 uh, to watch the Cardinals clinch that spot in the ACC championship game. Unfortunately, wasn't able to bring my recording equipment. I know that I mentioned that. It was going to be a while for there was a recording, uh, but still, I feel bad. I, I do want to take this time to apologize for not having an episode sooner. Um, it's Tuesday. The game was Saturday. Uh, so I know that it brings a lot of inconvenience and just overall delay. So I do want to apologize there. Um, but nonetheless, outstanding win and absolutely phenomenal, resilient fashion that the Cardinals put on display. The win itself was great. But what came from the win obviously was the main storyline that is clenching a spot in the ACC championship game for the first time since the team or since the University of Louisville joined um, the ACC back in 2014. Now, I said something back in May that at that time wasn't necessarily um, unheard of amongst national media because I felt like there were – college football analysts that were starting to suggest this. I wasn't the first person to say this. I wasn't the only one to say this. So this isn't really me patting myself on the back, but I felt like ever since mid-May, the momentum started to get larger and larger. What I said back in May was that the Cardinals were a dark horse to get to the ACC championship game. Like I said, this is not just... This is not me saying, hey, look at me. I was right. No, this was, I think, more so an indication that there were the stars were aligned for this to happen for this team for three reasons. Number one, in the main one, they got their guy in very interesting fashion. Jeff Brom came home to this program and I felt like he was an upgrade at the coaching position. Multiple people felt that way as well. I felt like this program was kind of being held back some ways due to coaching over the past couple of seasons. Number two, the schedule was there for the opportunity. Now, I will say this, all throughout the preseason, we talked about, yeah, the schedule is going to give Louisville a great opportunity to get to double-digit regular season wins. But I also remember saying that, you know, teams can outplay their projections on paper. And I feel like for the most part, this schedule hasn't been like top of the country level tough, but it's been respectable, I would say. I think that depending on the service or rating that you use, I've seen Louisville anywhere, I think, from 42nd to 84th, depending on which uh, site you so choose to go by. Um, but ultimately, I felt like the schedule was better than it projected to be. Georgia Tech was a better team than most projected them to be. That is just clearly a fact. Um, some other teams that you look at that are down the road, uh, Virginia was 2-7, and seven, still a tough matchup. Virginia Tech outplayed their um, record 
as opposed to what they were projected to be. Not necessarily a killer strength of schedule, but respectable. And then reason number three is that this team absolutely knocked it out of the park in the transfer portal. Jeff Brom and company went into the portal and addressed many positions of need, and not only did that, but also addressed depth concerns. And injuries have um, really struck this program this year. They lost um, all-conference safety MJ Griffin before the season even started. Jarvis Brownlee has missed multiple games. Juar Jordan has been not healthy uh, the past couple weeks. Um, Jamari Thrash has dealt with a hand issue. Brian Hudson has dealt with injuries at the center position. They lost Renato Brown for the entirety of the regular season um, after that game against Pittsburgh. So it just goes to show you that injuries struck this program hard, but it's a testament to how well this coaching staff addressed the needs via the transfer portal, went to the drawing board and said, hey, look, this is the amount of scholarships we had. We're going to fill these scholarships regardless of the depth pieces that we feel like we need at the positions that are um, needing the most depth. So three reasons for me as to how this was possible. And I mean, I have my doubts. I, I To make matters completely clear, I said that they were a dark horse to get there. I didn't say that they were likely to get there. I always knew that there was an avenue to get there. I didn't know if it was going to happen. My preseason projection was that this team was going to win eight games. I felt like that was a reasonable projection. Year one of a coaching staff um, didn't necessarily know what we were going to see schematically and didn't know how it was going to go year one, just because there's a lot of unknown variables in place. But this team has obviously gotten into that best case scenario, upper echelon uh, level of expectations, like some on um, you know the YouTube comments of this show said they would. And they call me a pessimist and, hey, I'll eat crow saying that I know that I said that this team could win 10 games. I just didn't know if it would happen. And it did happen. And that is a shout out to this team, this program, this coaching staff. And it has been fantastic. We can dwell on the loss against Pittsburgh all we want. But there are always going to be some bumps in the road. And I um, am extremely proud of this team for how they have battled all season long in different situations. There's been different issues that have popped up in different games and different players at different uh, positions have stepped up and helped this team to victory. And it just goes to show you how balanced overall this team is on the and defensive side of the ball. But this is uncharted territory for this program. Um, I feel like the sky is the limit getting to a conference championship in the ACC for the first time since joining almost a decade ago in the first year under Jeff Brom after he just took Purdue, <coughs> excuse me, Purdue to their first Big Ten championship appearance ever. Um, I feel like at this point, you know, obviously you want to beat Kentucky and that is the main goal right now, but anything after this game against Kentucky, I feel like is house money. You've gotten to 10 wins. You've gotten to the conference championship game. Anything that happens after that, you know, obviously you're building upon. Now, granted, you're going to go into those games believing you can win. And I'm not saying that if they lose, it's okay. I'm just saying that they've already really exceeded expectations. And it's extremely exciting to see what they still can accomplish with um, really three more games left to go, unless they were to uh, get into the playoff and maybe get to four games. But we're not going to think about the playoff yet. We're going to focus on Kentucky because you don't want to overlook the Governor's Cup. But ultimately, huge, huge um, first time going to Charlotte. Um, if you can make the trip down, definitely represent the 502. It's going to be an interesting game against Florida State, who just lost their starting quarterback, Jordan Travis, due to a season-long uh, or oh, – injury that will cost him the rest of his collegiate career. We do wish him uh, the speediest of recoveries, and hopefully it is a quick but full recovery for Jordan. Um, ultimately, fantastic times. I mean, that's really all you can kind of talk about is how well this team has played all year long. And uh, it's been in a couple of different ways, but one storyline that seemingly has uh, popped up time and time again is this team's ability to stay resilient and overcome adversity when it strikes, especially late in games. They did it a couple different times throughout the season. Georgia Tech, they had to overcome a double-digit 
um, deficit uh, and a big deficit at half. They had to hold off Indiana after almost blowing a 21 to zero first half lead. Um, they had to overcome a slow offensive game against NC State and win on the road. They had to hold off a pesky Virginia team to where they had to um, overcome a seven-point deficit in the fourth quarter. This team has been resilient all year long, and they put it on display once again with a come-from-behind victory against the Miami Hurricanes. They won 38-31. to It wasn't pretty at times, but like Jeff Brom said in the locker room, this team battled, and they are now rewarded with a trip to Charlotte. Let's talk more about that game and the team's resilience. We'll do that here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go to your profile, add the job with the purple hashtag hiring frame to show that you're the show that you're hiring you get simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills that you're prioritizing because look adding the right team member can have a positive and measurable impact on your business it's why linkedin jobs is the number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Cardinal fans, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Be sure to check it out. It is truly unprecedented. The win over Miami was a resilient one. It highlighted the team's ability to handle adversity. It showed the willingness to dig in and fight for each other. And it showed the team's ability to be clutch when clutch plays were needed. We'll talk about that in the last segment. It wasn't a pretty game overall. The team did put up 38 points on offense, which pretty solid against a very talented defense, one that is very solid in defending the run and getting after the quarterback. Uh, you look at what the Cardinals were able to do. They outgained Miami on the ground by three. Um, a lot of these were probably being able to be contributed to big plays on the ground. But ultimately, I felt like both teams – were really able to get going in the passing game. And that's where you were able to find things for um, for both teams. For the Cardinals, only one sack that came from, um, I believe it was Mason Riger who had the sack on Tyler Van Dyke, sort of helped change the momentum in the second half when Miami had the lead with the ball. Riger had the big sack that ultimately helped Louisville get the ball back. And then you look at the other side, the Cardinals did not give up a sack to a very talented Miami defensive front, so that deserves a lot of praise. It wasn't the prettiest performance on defense. Um, the team sort of got gashed on big plays. Miami actually um, outgained the Cardinals, having almost 500 total yards of offense. They had uh, 327 through the air. Tyler Van Dyke was 24-39, 327 yards and one touchdown, overthrew some guys, had some other instances to where, you know, didn't have that bad of a game, didn't turn the ball over either. That was one of the main things for Louisville coming into this game was winning the turnover margin. They actually did not. Jack Plummer had the interception that Cam Kinchins picked off on that uh, deep route to Jamari Thrash to where he just made a really good play. Um, Plummer might have thrown it a little bit late, but – Overall, Louisville lost the turnover margin. They got outgained, but the resiliency stayed put. It was truly a back-and-forth contest. No team was really able to um, distance themselves from the other. Louisville started out forcing a three-and-out and then scoring on a big touchdown drive. Miami came back with a touchdown, um, and then the teams kept trading. 
touchdown to touchdown. I know that there were some special teams mishaps with a short field goal miss, um, a blocked extra point that you could say, well, Louisville truly could have won this game 42 to 31 and it not have been as stressful. I understand that, but that's just the way games go sometimes. Um, that's how sports go. You get to the second half. Louisville should have been tied, or really honestly should have had the lead, but they were down by one. They hit the field goal. Um, Miami scored a big touchdown. Mark Fletcher had the touchdown run. Uh, he had a 54-yard run that was actually called, not called back, but called short of the goal line. He punched it in. Um, Louisville then had to punt. So Miami gets the ball back, 28-23, to third quarter waning down. And that is when, you know, the resiliency was shown. On a second and 10, Mason Riger had that huge sack that gave Louisville a huge opportunity that ultimately led to a Cardinals touchdown drive. And the resiliency on offense is that they didn't have too many huge plays outside of the one we'll talk about here momentarily in the clutch plays. Um, but what they did were was that they were very methodical. I'm going to talk about on tomorrow's episode how I feel like this was Jack Plummer's best game as a Louisville Cardinal. He had the one interception, but man, talking about a guy that just absolutely put it on the line and balled out. Sure, he had some instances to where he made some mistakes here and there, but for the most part, he was good in eluding pressure. He was solid in finding his receivers, um, going through his reads. An 11 play, I think that's a 89-yard drive. Um, that spanned into the fourth quarter. Maurice Turner with some big time plays. Josh Livson had a had a big catch. Joey Gatewood had a big catch. Had two big catches to be exact. And then Evan Conley came in on the Wildcat keeper for a touchdown. Jack Plummer with the two pointer to Jamari Thrash. Miami ties it up at thirty one, and then it gets really really interesting. I remember tweeting out, Jack Plummer, it's your time. Go win the damn game. And he had a chance to do that. Thankfully, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that two Miami players ran into each other. But that's how sports goes sometimes. We've seen Louisville on the wrong end of bad luck time and time again. So truthfully, I don't feel bad about Miami having that happen. Uh, hopefully, none of those guys got injured. I will say that. I'm not you know, saying that I don't feel bad if a player were injured. I'm saying I don't feel bad because of the bad luck. Kevin Coleman with the big touchdown catch and run. And let me say, his ability to then evade a tackle from Cam Kitchens on the sideline, Cam is going to be a first-round pick in April. There's a chance he's a top-20 pick in the NFL draft in April. That's how good of a player this guy is. Kevin Coleman uh, gave him a move and got around him, found the end zone, gave Louisville the lead. Now, granted, Miami went right back down the field, and that's something that we're going to have to talk about is the team not giving up big plays in the secondary down the field. But it got to a point to where it was first and goal from the four-yard line. Mark Fletcher ran the ball for a yard. Two very good defensive plays. There was an instance to where I think it was Devin Neal. It might not have been, but Devin Neal, whoever it was, had a very smart play to where he almost hid behind the referee. And when Van Dyke snapped the ball and wanted to go with the slant over the middle, it looked like a route option. And I think it was Xavier uh, Restrepo that tried to go over the middle and Devin Neal um, got in the way and deflected the pass. And those are types of plays that you don't maybe necessarily see as much, but they win you games. And then you have fourth and goal from the three and the defense bent but did not break. Same thing with the Hail Mary at the end. This team did what it needed to do. Sure, there were times where the defense really struggled. The offense kind of shot themselves in the foot. Um, you look at a couple plays where missed catches, uh, dropped passes um, out in the flat that would have extended drives. Instead, Louisville had to punt. Guys tripping before they get to the first down marker. It happened a couple times in the first half and stalled Louisville's drives out. Was it a perfect performance? No. In fact, it probably honestly never will be. Was it resilient? You're damn right it was. And that has been the storyline and the identity of this team on both ends of the field, both sides of the field, I should say, is how well this team does handling adversity and being resilient. So 
I, I want to take a look at some of those clutch plays, talk about how they were extremely key to the final outcome. We'll do that here after we talk about something that is going to come up clutch for you as we get into basketball season. That is prize picks. If you haven't heard about it, it is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's literally just, just you versus the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including professionals or sharks, um, you can pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. For me, it's the ability to have combo projections. So you can combine football and basketball. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions. It's pretty unique, and nobody else is putting forth this opportunity. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return, that player is rebooted. Name me one other service that does that, and I will show you that you're not telling the truth. Do yourself a favor. Go to prizepicks.com slash college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, prizepicks.com slash locked on college using the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Heading into the final segment of this reaction, late reaction podcast of the locked on global pot of the locked on global podcast. Um, the key plays for me were the clutch ones down the stretch. And sometimes you didn't necessarily um, think too much about them, but they definitely played a key for the Cardinals' victory. We could talk about the Kevin Coleman one. I mean, sure, that obviously was a clutch play because at the end of the day, you still have to do what you have to do, and you have to get to a spot to where, you know, you – Find the end zone by any means necessary, and that is key. I want to look back to this 11-play, 89-yard drive, which in my opinion was the most important drive of the game. The Cardinals got the ball back trailing in this game. Um, they were trailing 28-23 to after a Miami punt. They had the ball at their own 11. They hadn't really been able to move the ball all that well. They had punted the past two times, uh, both of the drives prior to this one was were worth three and outs. The team just was not able to move the football. They get the ball back. Miami had been moving the ball pretty well, and it was critical that Louisville goes down the field and at the very least gets some amount of points. And there's a lot of different players on this team that made huge impacts. Maurice Turner had some big-time plays. He started out the drive with two runs that gave Louisville a first down. He had a 13-yard um, pass that got the Cardinals to within the red zone or close to the red zone. Josh Lifson had a key third-and-four catch at the Louisville 31 um, that gave um, the Cardinals a first down, and it was an 11-yard catch that helped uh, Louisville really extend this drive. And then Joey Gatewood, a name that we really haven't talked about a ton um, was extremely key in this contest, especially on this drive. He had a 22-yard catch uh, that got Louisville into Miami territory. And then he had the catch on the sideline that Jack Plummer, really solid throw on the run, got the Cardinals to the five-yard line. I look at that drive as being the one that doesn't get enough attention because I felt like, ultimately, it was a situation to where you know, if you don't score, I really don't want to play the hypothetical game uh, for what happens. Now, it might all be moot. You could get the ball back again and score on the next drive. But you don't have to worry about that because you took the lead, and that was key. Defensively speaking, when you talk about the key clutch plays for this, I mean, I look at you can talk about that last drive, um, but I'm looking at the other plays. I'm looking at the Mason Riger sack that helped this team out, um, that got a huge opportunity for this team um, in terms of a third and long situation, taking Miami um, out of a very favorable spot um, and actually taking them out of field goal range. That's another key because if they're in a spot to where, let me be honest with you, Andres Borregales is one of, if not the best kicker in all of college football. 
that sack, if the Cardinals don't get it, there's a good chance that he hits another field goal. Because let's be honest, you look at it, that 51-yard field goal he made felt like it could have been good from 61, maybe 71. It was right down the middle. Absolutely nailed it. So that play for the Cardinals was key. Um, some other plays that I look at that, I mean, they all add up for me especially. Um, I mean, you could talk about the final play of the game. I think that play to where, I, like I said, I think it was Devin Neal. If it wasn't, um, it was one of the defensive backs that hid behind the referee and popped out right at the time of the snap and completely threw TBD off and resulted in an incomplete pass, helped Louisville win this game. So clutch plays definitely came up key. Tomorrow's episode of the show, we're breaking the performance down a little more. We're talking Jack Plummer's key performance. We're talking about if it's time to worry about the defense after two suboptimal performances and more. So be sure to stay tuned. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. To find the podcast on all streaming services, be sure to stay tuned to this graphic. Locked on Louisville podcast, free and available wherever you get your podcasts.